Today we're going to be covering branching. Uh, we'll have a brief view of code blocks, which are blocks of code which will be branched around, branched into various things. When you get a, a uh, uh, block, then you'll get a variables inside the block versus outside the block and which ones can see which ones. Of course, we have the if branching statement, which does the branching. The else clause, which is part of the if statement, or it can be left off. A nested if. Then we have your chained else if, which is a sort of nested if, where we have if expression, else if, else if, else if, where you can test a number of different expressions. And the expression in the if statement that's being tested. Um, another type of branch is the switch statement, which it gives you a multiple choice. It's like the else if, but uh, with different type of conditions. The conditional statement, or the ternary operator, which we've seen a little bit of that before. And although it's considered evil, it is something that we need to talk about because you will see it in different people's code, is the go-to statement. All right, now code blocks. You, we've already seen one type of code block where you've got your main function where you put the entire program inside of a code block. Basically, you have your open brace, your open curly brace, which begins a block of code, and your end curly brace, which ends a block of code. Now, you can use a block of code almost anywhere and for any reason. You know, generally, you want to keep it as readable as you can. Um, there are many cases where you might have a single line of code. It makes more sense to have a block of code there. And of course, a function such as main, you are required syntactically to have a block of code. Now, inside a block of code, your variables have scope, which means they can see everything inside that block of code. They can't see anything outside. Well, they can, nothing outside can see inside the block. It's, you, you're, it's a way of encapsulating your code from the rest of your code. So if code can see, cannot see variables in other blocks. So here's an example. Here we have the global area, which is outside of everything. And we've defined a variable, global var, equal to 17. Here's block A beginning, which stretches to here. And here's block B, which stretches from there. So, inside block A, we've got integer block A is equal to 5 times the global var. So, that'll be 17 times 5, whatever that adds up to. I'm not going to work it out. And inside this block, we have another block, block A1, which can also see block A, and it can see the global variable. And then we have block A2, which is also inside block A. And it can see the block A variable is global to block A, but not global to the program. And the global var, which is actually global to the entire program, but it cannot see block A1's variable. That's in a different block. Same thing here with block B. You can set the global var because you can see it. You have access. You can read to it. You can write to it. You can go both directions. You can set it to your block B plus 5, but you can't do anything with this variable, block A2, which comes from inside the other block. 
And so, so this this is we, we, this is more important when you have um, functions and various other things where you're actually dividing your program into different files, into different pieces, and handing them out to different programmers to do different things. Um, if one programmer is working on this program. This one piece of the program, he doesn't want his other programmer to change his pieces. So this gives you a little bit more control over the full application. Now, finally, we get into our if statement. It tests an expression for truth. It does a little Boolean arithmetic on it. If the expression is true, then it goes into the if section. Here we have the if section is inside this code block. So if, so here we just get a, get a number from the user. He says, just, just type a number, you put a number in there, and it'll say, see out, you entered this number. If the number you entered is greater than, it'll do a test here, 52. 52 greater than 50, that's true. If it's true, this code block is run. Uh, 52 is too large, so we shrink it. So we just subtract 25 from the number. And then we print out it's a good number. If you put in 49, 49 greater than 50, well, that's false. So we'll skip over this code block. This code will not be executed. else clause. The code is executed if the if expression evaluates to false. And if you put an else onto the if, it will go into the, elf, the else portion. So here we have if the age is less than 65, you don't get a senior citizen discount. But if you're 65 or older, this will evaluate to false. So you'll go down into the else clause. It says you qualify for a senior citizen discount, and we set the flag equal to true. Now note that every else has to be attached to an if. You can't just put an else out in the middle of the code. It has to be an associated if statement. Because the way that's the way it works, if the value is true, then the else, the if block. Is, is, is executed. If it's false, then you go into the else block.